Rob has been a flying instructor. He was a chief pilot with this club for a number of years. He has sailed a 24-foot yacht to the Middle East <clears throat> and back again. When he was with the Aero Club, he attempted to achieve a world record by carrying out the maximum number of spins at the time, and he got up to 74. So he's going to show a video of that and talk to it as we go through. This is a pilot's view of his aircraft spinning towards the ground at more than 130 kilometres per hour. It's a thrill one Perth pilot is addicted to. Oh, look, just good fun. Just good fun. It really is. Perth stunt pilot Rob Turner has spun his way into the record books with a stunning display of daredevil flying over Jandicott. The 47-year-old flight instructor completed 79 dizzy spins before levelling out in his tiny plane. That's nearly double the previous record. That's it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> what I'll do is uh, break this uh, video into the different segments. There's a news segment, of which that's the first part, and then there's an interview later on. And uh, in the middle is a uh, visual record of the whole spin. But just to give you a uh, little bit of a, a background on how it all started. Does anyone here not know what a spin is from a technical point of view? You all know what it is? Great. I don't have to describe that then. Uh, we look bit closer to the end of the talk then. I was a senior instructor here at the club. I was uh, chief pilot at the time and John Douglas uh, had always encouraged aerobatics within the club and uh, was very, very keen on making sure that people were quite familiar with spinning and stalling. And uh, no more so than me as uh, the person who was charged with running the instructor training school. It played a fairly big part in our role of training. Now I knew that uh, a former instructor, Barry Seward, at one stage done 15 turns in the old Tiger Moth out in the training area there. And uh, I was watching telly one night and sure enough there was a black in England had done 44 turns and was shown on television out here. It got us talking a little bit about how many turns you could do in an aircraft. And Adrian Thomas, who was a very keen club member and at the time was Australian aerobatic champion, fronted up one night with a new video camera showed it to me and sort of said he was going to go home and film his, uh, his own family with it. And I said, well, why waste a good camera like that on your family? I'll take you spinning and let's get some photos from out the front windscreen. Well, Adrian no longer was interested in photographing or filming his family. We got him an aircraft in and there and uh, took off. And uh, I flew and Adrian clung on for dear life with a camera up in front of his eyes, filming out the front of the window. Well, that lunchtime, he rigged it up to the television set downstairs in the old instructor training room. And it was the most exciting two minutes of footage that those instructors had ever seen. And uh, it sort of fostered talk within the instructor group here at the club. How many turns could be done with a, a Cessna 152 Aerobat? And uh, we thought we'd have a little experiment and see. And the first thing, of course, you have to get up to as high as you can to get the most number of turns. And that meant that we couldn't take Adrian Thomas with us to do the filming, we needed someone else. So I thought, well wait on, Channel 9's got reputedly a good uh, TV crew, I'll contact them. They weren't the slightest bit interested in uh, what we were doing. I walked away dejected and I got as far as the door and I said, incidentally, uh, it could be a world record in this, because I heard that some chap in England did 44 turns, and I know we can do 55 turns, because I've done it. And all of a sudden, Channel 9 couldn't do enough for us. They fell over. You mentioned the word record to a television company, and they're in there, I can tell you. And uh, thanks to Channel 9, we've got the footage that I'll show you today. From our point of view, it was always just an experiment. We didn't even think about world record or anything until Channel 9 sort of started pushing. Uh, we decided that it was mid-summer then. We'd wait till the late April weather gave us the last of the, uh, the summer weather and the first of the cool weather before we tried it. On the day concerned, we got down here and uh, there was not only Channel 9, we'd not mentioned it to anyone, but uh, Channel 7 and Channel 10 were there as well. They were locking the, uh, the tarmac up, it couldn't move the cords and cameras, and uh, people wanting to get me to say something, so it all became a bit of a circus, but uh, uh, let's have a look at the footage now. As a flying instructor, Rob decided to get an early start for work at the Royal Aero Club in Jandicott. He had a world record attempt to get out the way before spending the rest of the day teaching students the finer points of flying. Rob's aim, to put the club and WA on the map by completing more than 70 spins in his small Cessna. 
and he wanted to make sure every nut and bolt would hold. This is the thing that, if this bus would work, we don't come out of it. Even in a plane wildly whirling towards Earth, you still have to see where you're going. But this pilot doesn't consider it's a crazy stunt. No, not at all. I think the considerations we've taken into account, uh, airframe safety, aircraft safety, uh, my fitness, uh, they've all been attended to. I'm looking forward to it. The aircraft is a Cessna 152 Aerobat, specially built for this type of punishment, and so is the pilot with more than 25 years experience. He did have a previous attempt 18 months ago and completed 55 spins but the Guinness Book of Records didn't recognise it. This time there'll be no hitches and after reaching 13,000 feet the smoke was on and he was off. We're on our way Mike and she's going well. Locking in beautifully, very very stable. Just passing 11 and a half now. Going to try and wind her up a little bit though. Get some speed into that spin. From inside the cockpit, the death-defying dive is terrifying. The plane literally falling out of the sky with its engine shut down. It's stabilising nicely into the spin. She's locked in very nicely, approaching 3,000. With the ground rapidly drawing near, the news came through he'd completed 79 spins, smashing a previous record of 44 to the obvious pleasure of the ground crew. A few minutes later, the aircraft was down safely, not too worse for wear, and a new record holder clambered out. Woo, what a buzz. Very, very pleased with it, yes. Uh, deep down, I was thinking if I can do 65 or more, I'll be very, very pleased. But 79, oh, crikey. You know, I'll be writing to Guinness Book of Records tonight, I think. As for another record attempt, Rob says that's for the birds. A remarkably cool, What's cool that, man. That? <laughs> yes, Rob's uh, at home tonight, literally unwinding. I don't think I've ever been a cool, cool man. Uh, 15 years suffering post-traumatic stress proof to that, I think. But tell me, who's seen a world record holder in a nice white shirt and tie before? <laughs> right, setting out to set a, a world record. Just a few comments about uh, that bit of footage there. Uh, as I said earlier, Channel 9 was invited to do it, but the other channels uh, rocked up as well. It was pandemonium on the strip. I spent the rest of the day, or most of the rest of the day, doing spins for the other two TV channels so that they'd have footage for that night. As it was, uh, whereas I thought uh, I'd been inducing Channel 9 to come down to use their cameras uh, simply so we could have footage and count the number of turns. From 13,500 feet you couldn't even see the aircraft, but uh, as you saw there we uh, had borrowed from a parachuting uh, a student I had, two smoke canisters to put on the outside wingtip and a flying doctor lent us an oxygen bottle and a mask that didn't work but it did satisfy the department that we had it on board <laughs> and uh, we set off. I think this uh, film was the best publicity the club had ever had in its life. I thought it was going to be news filling a bit at the end of the news. It was world headlines around the world. It not only was headlines here in Perth, it was shown nationally on every TV station, uh, commercial station I should say. I had friends as far away as, um, let me read the list out here, New Zealand, Canada, America, Hong Kong, Japan, Germany, England, and even Fremantle, <laughs> uh, had all seen that footage on their television, so that was pretty good um, advertising for the Royal Aero Club. We were glad we did it. But it does show what a little bit of spectacular videotaping and some reporter's hype can make it a simple aerobatic manoeuvre. And incidentally, I wasn't 47, I was 44. I reckon some journalists looked at me after the event and just took a guess at my age. And let's have a look at the spin itself now. This is just in the moments before the, uh, the actual spin itself. Taking an aircraft at ceiling altitude, which proved to be just a whisker over 13,500 feet, uh, it climbed well to about 11,000 feet and then it was very, very difficult. Uh, climbing at about one knot above stall speed, the aircraft sort of was mushing like this on the way up. Eventually I sort of gave it away and said, let's start the, the spin. There's nothing to do during the spin, you just hold on full rudder and full backstick and just sit there and enjoy the ride. <laughs> Yeah, it looks spectacular, but from inside, really, it's just another thing. We're on our way, Mike, and she's going well. Locking in beautifully, very, very stable. Just 
Just passing 11 and a half now. He's going to try and wind her up a little bit though. Get some speed into that spin. Passing 11,000. Going nicely. She's really winding up. Taking that ailer and off gently. Well and truly in it. And I've just lost it. No, I thought I was losing the engine. There goes the engine. Engine stop. No power now. Just coming up on 11, on uh, 9,000 feet. Trying to get a bit of speed into that rotation. Going very nicely. Eight and a half thousand. I believe in the last war, pilots coming back from their sorties used to do victory rolls when they shot someone or killed someone. I did one there because I wasn't dead. <laughs> Rob, obviously done in the days before GoPros, did you have somebody with you filming? No. Oh, right. No, uh, I was just about to say, Cam Channel 9 put one of the, in fact, their very first use of those mini cameras uh, was on this day when they taped it up to the back of the uh, cockpit. And uh, they had the big zoom lens on their tripod on the ground, which was the only camera I thought they were going to come down with, so they could uh, accurately film the number of turns. But as you saw there, someone tripped over the tripod, and uh, if it hadn't been for the inside camera, we wouldn't have been able to accurately count the number of turns we did. This next one is just a uh, interview with a Channel 9 wide world of sport on the following Saturday afternoon. You know, it never ceases to amaze me how many different ways the thrill seekers of the world have found a way to drop out of the sky. And this week in Perth, we found a new way, thanks to 47-year-old Rob Turner, Chief Flying Instructor at the Royal Aero Club in WA. Welcome, Rob, and I want to know, has business been brisk this week after seeing that Wednesday spiral? It certainly has, Ken. Really has. It was an amazing feat, I must say. Uh, seeing it there, I, I felt as if I had to go for the brown paper bag at one stage, but you were so calm about the whole deal. I guess it's all in the day's work to the type of work that I do, Ken. Uh, just another thing. I couldn't believe, I mean, you had to go to, what, 14,000 feet, and it took you something like, what, an hour and a half to do that? No, it was about an hour. I uh, initially thought it would be about an hour and a half, but the aircraft climbed like a rocket, so uh, we were quite embarrassed, really, because a lot of the ground people that I had organised to do the counting and everything, we had to get on the phone quite smartly to get them to get there earlier. Yeah. All right, now let, let's, let's take a look at that final uh, climb to altitude. Is there extra fuel that you have to take on for such a thing? I mean, what, what, are, what are the extra precautions or whatever you've got to do to go into something like this? Absolutely nothing, Ken. I think the magic of uh, our point of view over here at the Aero Club was that I simply took one of our standard aircraft off our, uh, our line, a typical aircraft that you or anyone else could come down tomorrow and learn to fly in, put an aircraft together with a, an Aero Club trained instructor, and we're at uh, world record standard, ready to go. 14,000 feet, you're not in a pressurized, you pressurized aircraft? I mean, what, what no, is... it's not, Ken, it's not. Uh, we had oxygen on board. That's an Australian regulation that we have to uh, breathe oxygen once we're above 10,000 feet. So what, what was the record you were trying to beat, the uh, spins? To establish a world record, uh, primarily with Guinness Book of Records, who don't list uh, spins. Yeah. They do list loops, but in aer any aerobatics, the basic manoeuvres are loops, rolls and spins. I think for about uh, 70 or 80 years now, they've thrilled crowds, and uh, all over the world, crowds absolutely love watching those manoeuvres, but there's no established record for them. So okay. I thought, well, I like spins, we'll do it. <laughs> all right, well, let's do it now. This is the start of your drop. Barry Sheen, I mean, you've done it all. This is different. Well, yeah. I'd... What about the disorientation, Rob, when you're coming down after, say, sort of 15 or 20 spins, doesn't the old head start going a bit funny? Kevin, I guess it would if I wasn't used to it, but I've done so many of them now, uh, many of them only around 30, 35 turns, that, I don't know, just another day's work, I suppose, it didn't worry me. So what do you do? Do you look at, on the way down, do you look at the natural horizon or your artificial horizon, or what do you do? No, the artificial horizon isn't much good to me. I just look at the altimeter mainly, yeah. uh, with occasional glances outside, just to make sure the Earth's still a respectable distance away. Uh, Rob, uh, you're obviously a good talker because you talked all the way through this uh, record. You weren't phased at all. I mean, there's no co extra concentration powers for something like this? No, no, not at all. Not at all. What about when the engine cuts out? Was that all, that was always going to happen? Oh yes, yes, the fuel in the tanks, because we had uh, minimal fuel to keep the aircraft as light as we could to get to the maximum height, uh, we understood that the en engine would cut out as the fuel was thrown to the outside end of the tanks. You don't really that need... happened right on cue. You don't really need the motor to, to come down through a spin anyway, do you Rob? No, no, not at all. 
just all an engine does in an aeroplane is keep you up there. Yeah, it's kind of important when you get to the bottom. No, not really. You wait and see. <laughs> I bet. Were you waiting to see if the engine would start any trepidations that it would uh, kick off? Not at all. I've got total confidence in the mechanics at the Aero Club and uh, the way they maintain our aircraft. What was the general feeling uh, from the Aero Club that you were attempting something like this? I think all the 20 instructors we've got, uh, about a thousand of our members over here were absolutely supportive all the way. Rob, I think there's a little bit of Biggles in with you. There's a little bit of romance because I like the way you, you finished the record. Uh, it was like uh, almost a cavalier attitude that was just uh, so easy for you. There was a victory roll, wasn't there? That's right. Was that always going to be the way for you? Oh, yes, for sure. Here we you go. You finish a thing like that off without a, a roll. Well, let's just listen to you here. Just watch this. And a little something to finish. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Rob. I tell you what, um, I, I admire your skill, but I don't want to travel with you. I'm disappointed. Now, well, actually, I've been in a lot of aircraft, but I've uh, and tried most things. But that that sort of thing is uh, uh, something that really does leave you quite squeezy. And uh, Barry was looking at that, and you, you you've you've lost your suntan, son. Yeah. Well, I I should imagine you'd have real trouble finding the little brown paper bag in the back of the seat when you get to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't fancy that. Did anyone uh, want to go with you at all, uh, Rob? Was anyone there at all with you? No partners uh, at all in the Oh, cockpit? no, I was on main in the aircraft, but as I say, uh, I did about four hours of uh, spins uh, later on in the day. What, what was the total length of the, the spins? What time did it take? Yeah. Two yeah. and a quarter minutes coming down, a rate of descent almost 5,000 feet a minute, which equaled out at one turn every 155 feet of descent. Well, a marvellous little plane, then. We reckon they're pretty good. No, no, uh, I mean, does the aircraft go anything stressful or extra? Was there any strength in the extra strength no, in the aircraft at all? No, nothing at all. Nothing at all. All we did was put some smoke canisters on the wingtip so that it could be seen from the uh, high altitude. What has been the reaction from the uh, people in aviation to it? As I said earlier, I think they're absolutely wrapped in it. They've been very supportive. And I think uh, within 12 months, the club will have an, a membership of 500 people more. And what about the Guinness Book of Records? They're, they're going to acknowledge it? I hope they will. Have they been on the talking to you, phone calls or whatever? Yes, I've been speaking with them. It's very, very hard to get a new record established with them, but uh, I think we're pushing very hard and we will get that established. Well, well done, Rob. Um, as I said, I hope business was brisk for you. I thought it might have uh, gone off a little bit over the last seven days, but you tell me people have still got a bit of daredevil in them, obviously. <laughs> I think so. Good on you, mate. Well, well done. Thanks very much for joining us this afternoon. Thanks very much, Ken. Don't believe everything you hear on television. <laughs> Uh, no one in the air club except a few instructors and John Douglas knew I was going to do it. Um, just a few comments there to finish off with. Uh, the Guinness people didn't put it in their book. They said it was too dangerous and they didn't want to encourage other people to attempt it. Uh, blimey. Something is a mandatory procedure to getting a pilot license and they reckon it's too dangerous, eh? So be it. Well, that record stood for 16 years until someone in America did 80-something turns in a more powerful decathlon aircraft. And we have to talk about CASA, or whatever their name was back in those days, and their attitude to it. Two days prior to the spin being taken place, the hierarchy in Perth ordered Avian Lambourne, who was then an uh, examiner of airmen with them, to phone me and to plead on their behalf for the spin to be uh, cancelled. Unfortunately, unknownly to them, they had chosen the wrong man to do the telephoning because Avian Lambourne happened to be the examiner of them and that was my mentor all through my uh, advancing time here in the Aero Club and he was right behind me. He couldn't have been more supportive and here he is on one hand saying loudly into the phone, Rob, they want you to cancel it, please don't do it. And then he'd say, Rob, don't, don't take any notice of what I'm saying. Don't take any notice of what I'm saying. <laughs> Ten minutes later, uh, after I declined to uh, cancel it. He was back on the phone saying they won't accept your answer. Please cancel. And again he was going through the antics of saying don't cancel, don't cancel. And uh, we went ahead. I really thought they might have tried to stop the uh, airways clearance coming through to operate uh, overhead Jandicott. Someone in air, air traffic control told me that they tried to but uh, they had no authority to do that and uh, air traffic control took no notice of them. Air traffic control incident, incidentally were very very good. They gave me an open clearance to operate where I wanted. We did the spin just to the south of the field here on the, uh, the southern end of the uh, 
uh, circuit area, just where all those earthworks are taking place there, and it was close enough to uh, get near the camera so they could get a good view. And Janticot Tower organised for me to enter their zone from overhead without radio contact until I had finished the spin, and they kept the traffic up to the northern end of the field. There's only one other thing to mention of it, uh, this spin, actually. Uh, in the closing days of the last century, 2000, uh, but somewhere between Boxing Day and New Year, a friend of mine rang me and said, I saw you on television last night, bro. And I said, I wasn't on television last night. What for? And he said, oh, you were doing a spin. He said, anyway, I've taped it. You can have a look at it. And he came around and showed me this whole videotape of the 20 most dangerous stunts of the 20th century. There's Evil Knievel trying to jump the Grand Canyon on his motorbike. He got first, and the second up behind him was Rob Turner trying to do the spin. Well, if that's a dangerous manoeuvre, I reckon television's got it all wrong, and it just shows what they will do for uh, a bit of uh, airtime. And they certainly use me to the maximum. Uh, if I'd known what I know now, I would have charged them $10,000 for that footage and they would have made a lot of money out of it, and so would the Aero Club. Really, it's all about nothing. You know, they, they use terms and words and uh, making a big thing out of absolutely nothing. But these days, it is nothing. My young grandson was watching me prepare this footage for today's talk, and he sat down and watched. I said, what did you think of that? He said, Granddad, you're just a legend in your own lunchbox. <laughs> It's been 30 years now, and look, I still enjoy watching that bit of footage. I like it. I hope you have too. Thank you. <laughs>